Welcome back to Farmcraft. This is part two of building a foundry furnace starting with a water heater. All right, so I'm figuring out this hinge as I go. This is just a piece of inch and a quarter heavy wall pipe that I've welded to a plate. I'll weld that to the top. I've got good, uh, good solid material to weld to there. And then this is the same pipe, inch and a quarter heavy wall. It's going to be welded on underneath. And then this is a piece of three quarter inch solid. Uh, I actually took the cutout of one of these uh, brackets and cleaned it up, welded it onto the end, and then I welded a washer there so that it goes down in there and spins well. I'm gonna have a removable handle that goes in here like that. The fulcrum needs to be here so that when I push down the lid will come up and then I can swing it out of the way uh, and it'll swing by rotating on this. I need a couple tabs that go down and then something in the center here that a bolt can go through allow that to pivot. The first thing I actually want to do, I'm going to go ahead and get this welded in position. I'm going to weld a little pipe that a bolt can go through. Once the pipe's there I can bring the tabs down and have them fit around that pipe and just weld them in position. Got it held underneath with a magnet. Let's go ahead and weld that into place. So here I've got a piece of one inch. I just drilled a 3 8 hole down the center. We'll accept a 3 8 bolt. I'm going to pad this up one quarter inch. So now let's make those tabs. This is going to be welded onto this piece that will rotate. So now I'm going to put some healthy tack welds on everything. Before I totally weld it up, I'm going to test it and make sure it works. Let's give this a test run. Handle goes in. Fix the lid up nicely, and then I just need a, a hook here that I can hook that under, and then I'll be able to let go. The hinge works well, so I'm going to go ahead and weld that up. Before I make the, uh, the hook, I'm going to go ahead and get this handle the way I want it. I'm going to cut a piece of this inch and a quarter pipe that will make a nice handle. This fits inside, so I'll just slide over, you know, a four or five inch section and weld it on. Cleaning up this piece of black pipe and putting a good chamfer on the inside for the weld. That is a proper handle. So now I just need a hook lid really isn't that heavy. I'm thinking I could actually put the hook right off of that. Something like this. So this is what I came up with. I put this step underneath because it's going to be getting pulled up and I didn't want to just trust a weld. So it's a solid piece. I can weld along there. There will also be some torque on it that way. So having some length under there is going to help that. So when that comes around, my arm's in the way, but... I'll be able to hook it there and the lid will be totally out of the way. Let me get that welded on. So yeah, I just took another piece of that pipe, welded it on right there, and uh, that's perfect. But it also gives me a place to move this around. This hook I find myself grabbing a lot too. I, I uh, rounded the edges so it's easy to grab, it's not going to cut me. So it holds my handle, gives me a way to move it, and then there you go with the lid. So all I have left to do now is the coatings. So this is going to be the second coat of Satanite.
That's a bunch of steam coming off of there. Starting to turn black in there and uh, lots of steam. The area where the flames coming out you can see is drying out. The rest of it up here is still quite wet. I'm seeing a lot less moisture in that. It looks like that one right there is still a little wet. Not nearly as much steam that time. A successful furnace. 2500 is hot enough to melt cast iron. So I ran that for a good probably more than 10 minutes. Right here is lukewarm. Down here is cool. That's barely warm. The lid's hotter. The top is actually not as hot as the side. Very well insulated. That is going to be really efficient. So I've got some cracks in there, but everything feels nice and firm, well attached. I'm going to mix up a little more Satanite and just brush in those cracks just to try to fill those. So this one I'm putting on as thin as I can, just, just enough to get into those cracks. Um, now the lid, I don't know what happened here. The lid really cracked up. This is not well attached. This stuff is loose. So I am going to have to do something with that. Disappointing. After a little thinking, it dawned on me what's going on here. I didn't make this right. This was a bad idea. I watched other YouTube videos of people doing this kind of thing, and I saw people doing exactly this, you know, using some hardware cloth and uh, in laying the, the insulation down in the big flat sheets. It's real tempting to do that with a big lid, uh, as opposed to doing it like I made my other furnace, where you can see I stacked them in like that. Um, this is the way you actually want to do it. Don't do this. This is stupid. The reason is because this metal obviously is going to expand and contract as it gets hot and cold. Um, and I even put those studs vertically on there. Uh, laying this insulation down flat, you, you have to give it some support. See this insulation, this is just a scrap here, it's strong this way. But this stuff is laying down like in this orientation. It's not strong that way, it's in layers. So that pulls right apart. Whereas this way, you actually have to tear it. Um, so it's much stronger in the other orientation. So you're better off to use smaller pieces and stack them like this. Then you don't have any metal in there to expand and contract. So that's the way I would do this if I were to do it again right now. Because it's such a big lid, what I would do is put, you know, before you put the insulation in, I would put sodium silicate down so that the the insulation is glued in place and it's not just going to fall back out. I would also pack it very tight so that it wants to stay put and I think that would make a much better lid. Now in order for me to do that with this lid right now I'd have to rip the whole thing apart. The shell is still there. It wouldn't take that long but really I don't see any point. I'm going to use this until it fails Then when it fails it'll be falling apart. Well then I'll rip it apart and uh, and do it the right way. So learn from my mistakes, don't do this. Thankfully the Satanite in here is well adhered and it's doing fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire this last layer that I put on and then it's, it's gonna be ready for the final coating. See it's starting to turn black again. So I'm gonna go through that whole process and then I'll bring you guys back. So here's what we look like after firing. There's one crack there. It's, uh, it's not very wide, I'm okay with that. The rest of it looks really quite good. So this is 100 HT ceramic coating made by ITC. Two parts of it to one part water. 
And I am using distilled water. Stuff's pretty expensive, why bother uh, mixing in water that might make it less effective? Now you can apply this directly onto the ceramic blanket, but uh, they say you have to put on two coats. And from what I researched, it sounded like <clears throat> doing the Satanite and then this is the more robust, long-lasting way to go. But I put a little extra here where the flame comes in and hits that wall. I think that looks rather good. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. You're going to see more of this in the near future. I wonder if I can melt cast iron with this thing.